someone that could send me an email with the link uh, so I could try Good to, to see you all. Oh, Susie, I'll make you the co-host. And Laura is also here today. Thank you, Laura. I'm telling that so Susie also knows. Okay. Darlene, did you get an answer to your question? I oh, know I haven't. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Let me see if I can do it from here. She, so Darlene needs a link because she'd like to access the video from her computer. Yeah, she's trying to help Darlene, but she's not in the meeting, which is why she can't respond to that. Let's see if uh, Melissa can text Darlene to remind her she goes to the Dia Foundation website to get in. No. Okay. Alrighty, let's take a comfortable seat to get started. And we'll start, Susie, with my, um, my I don't know what you call this, the close-up camera. <laughs> and then we'll go to the standing camera after a bit. And I do have this amazing Portland silver sky shining light on my face, so you guys can enjoy my radiance. I don't have a block for that particular light source. So please take a comfortable seat. We're going to be exploring the nature of pitta in class today. So in terms of pitta, its element is fire and water. And that's a reminder for all of us, it's fire and water. So you can rest your hands in your lap and let your eyes close. And appreciate yourself for the good personal leadership that lets you be here today. You had some scheduling considerations. You met those. You have logistics. You accomplished that. And you have some dedication and you're expressing that right now. So welcome your breath to reflect those qualities, appreciating you've already had skill in action. You've prioritized your practice. You're expressing your dedication. And then let your breathing slowly deepen so that it goes geographically lower in the pelvis. Also make it smoother so it's able to go through the front spine up the central channel of your body. And during the exhale, you want to sense this gentle tone of the low belly inward and upward and that that tone is going to be in a way kind of um, holding the fire. The fire element is at the solar plexus. So you don't need this tone for the exhale beneath the fire to be like a, a wild bellows. Right? You don't need it to be putting so much effort in that the fire becomes too hot moving up towards the mind. So the exhale is like a gentle tone to support that fire at the solar plexus. You almost might think of it like you're exhaling in such a way as you wouldn't cause a candle flame to be blown out or to flicker much in the breeze of your exhale. This also means that how you're inhaling has to be in relationship with how you're exhaling. How you're inhaling is in relationship with your exhale. And if the exhale purpose this afternoon is to have the exhale be steady, but not to make the fire too chaotic, as if the exhale were not going to make a candle flicker, the inhale has to be in response to that exhale.
Now, just a few moments of breathing practice and you already have some information for yourself, about yourself, about the quality of your mind, your body, and your health today. So let's now bring the hands together in Anjali Mudra. And you can sing with me. This is the Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhagavata Sudha Tatsavetor Varenyam Argo Devasya Dimohi Diyoyona Prachorayata to your heart, release your hands, please open your eyes. So as a person whose primary dosha is pitta, I'm excited to offer you this class this afternoon so we can modify our approach to yoga based on our doshas. We'll go to the standing camera, Susie, thank you. And we want to be in really good relationship with our dosha it's, uh, and our dosha's habits. The word dosha means that which tends to go out of balance. So we have some learning to do in this regard. So please come up to standing. And when you rise up to stand, take a stance on your mat so your feet are about hip distance and a little bit wider, like hip distance plus. Right. Reach back and interlace your fingers. Roll your shoulders open. Give a good strong clasp of the arms behind you. And with the hands clasped, take your tailbone down, begin to raise your heart up and consider how do you breathe in this position? How deeply do you go physically to maintain the smoothness of that exhale from your deep low belly? And how do you support yourself in the physical structure so that your inhale is still available to you and in relationship with your exhale. And then as you next exhale, come forward with the hands clasped, bend your knees, and let the torso cascade down. As you do your best to raise your arms up towards the ceiling, hands clasped together. This is a very different shape for your lungs and for your body, a really different relationship to gravity. So taking notice, what is happening now with the smoothness of your exhale and how the exhale prepares you for your inhale. And then let's release both hands and arms, let them drape down towards the floor Press into your heels and rise up to standing mountain pose. Right. Take a wide stance. Let's make the feet parallel. Once more, reach back and clasp your hands, but change the interlace of your fingers by one digit like that. 
And then as you roll your shoulders open, same idea with discernment, root the tailbone, raise your heart and proceed towards your pose with your breath as your guide. We want you to still be able to exhale smoothly from the deep low belly. And that will influence your inhale. And this time as you exhale, bring your chest and heart forward, bow over the tops of your thighs. Release the weight of your torso. Let the arms come overhead again. Fingers still interlaced. Notice once more the shape of the breath, the shape of the spine, and the shape of your lungs are all very different here. And yet the constant that is not changing is this thing yoga calls awareness, this, this consciousness itself, that in you which is watching how the breath changes shape, how the body has sensations, how this whole experience is unfolding with you as the, the primary celebration. And please glide your heart forward, rest your hands on the back of your hips and rise up to standing. Release both arms and step your feet to center. And let's step to the front of the yoga mat for Surya Namaskar. And join your hands together at your heart. And root down into your heels and toes and steady into your legs. You may close your eyes and imagine that the flame, which is the digestive fire at the stomach, does not need to be a brush fire, should not be a chaotic fire, just enough to digest food, thoughts, and emotions. So how you exhale from the deep low belly matters to that experience of fire. If you start breathing like a dragon, you will have the mind like a dragon, like a fiery dragon. I'm not recommending that. And when you next inhale, sweep your hands down wide and up. Look up and enjoy a little standing back bend. And then exhale, hands to your heart, bow over the tops of your thighs, touch the floor or your yoga blocks. Inhale, glide your heart forward, reach through the crown of your skull. Exhale, step your left foot straight back. Inhale, rise to your crescent lunge. So we're going to stay a little while. So in your crescent lunge pose, try to sense where is the breath moving? It is possible, thank you, Susie. It is possible to close your eyes, right? And to keep your balance. Imagine the flame in the stomach region. It's the fire of like, digestion and also personal sense of purpose and contribution. But this fire does not need to be a brush fire or a chaotic undertaking. It's yours to steward. You are the fire steward. And as you next exhale, sweep your arms wide, bow over your right leg, lightly touch the floor as you complete your exhale. And then inhale, step your left foot forward, Bring the crown of your skull forward. Exhale, step back with your right foot. Inhale, rise to your crescent lunge. As you're coming up, yeah, beautiful. Plan to stay a little while. So the container in which the fire is sitting is also important. You press down through your left heel and toes. Gently lift your pubic bone, the amount that you need for your pelvis to feel centered and stable. And though this pose is dynamic, and because it's dynamic, it produces some fire, I'm gonna ask you to keep practicing with the breath this afternoon, as if the exhale breath would not make the candle flame flicker wildly. You might notice that the way you effort in the physical yoga pose has to be adapted to prioritize the breath. 
The next time that you're going to exhale, sweep the arms wide and gracefully come forward and down. We're going to lightly touch the floor to step backwards to downward facing dog pose. In downward dog pose, listen through one full breath cycle, the exhale breath, not causing the candle flame to flicker wildly, but to be steady. That candle flame represents your mind, your discernment, the sense that you are experiencing your body intelligence moving through you and learning how to be in relationship with it. So when you next inhale, please come forward to plank pose. Beautiful. When you exhale, bend your elbows, come down to Chaturanga Dandasana. Reach back and interlace your fingers at the small of your back. And let's inhale, roll up to Salamasana, chest and heart, arms and legs, head and eyes. And then we exhale to roll down, right? We're going to go down to the starting position, but not become lax and limp there. You inhale, rise slowly, using the breath, the amount that's needed, not forceful. Exhale to lower down without blowing out the candle that is beneath your nose. Let's do that twice more, please. When you exhale to roll down, keep the muscles in the body toned. And as you inhale to roll up one more time, listen for the way you partner with your body's capacity. And then exhale smoothly down without blowing out the candle beneath the tip of your nose. Place your hands beneath your shoulders with your toes pointed, rise to Cobra Pose, Bhujangasana. And then exhale, roll up to Plank Pose. Inhale, reach high into Downward Facing Dog Pose. And now let's exhale, step forward with your right foot, please, between your hands. And touch your left knee down to the floor. The pose is called Anjane Asana. We're going to keep the fingers on the floor or the blocks for right now. Let your head bow gently towards the floor. Curl your left toes under. And as you inhale, slowly straighten your left leg behind you. And as you exhale, slowly touch your left knee down very lightly. We'll do this three times more. So as you inhale, you slowly straighten the left leg behind you. Good. When you exhale, slowly touch it down. And go slowly enough that you really sense the intricacy of movement. Inhale to straighten, lengthen and strengthen your left leg. But exhale to slowly touch your knee down. And here comes the last one. Inhale to straighten your left leg. And exhale to lightly touch the left knee down. Now draw into your low belly and inhale, rise up to Anjane Asana. Susie can come to my video. In Anjane Asana, let's hook the two thumbs and try wrapping the palms to face each other. Turn your pinkies in, turn the elbows in, lift through your heart, and follow the course of the breath. That means during your exhale, if there were a candle flame beneath the nose, you're not causing it to flicker wildly. Let your eyes be tranquil. Pitta also governs the eyes. With your next smooth exhale, sweep your arms wide, bow over your right leg, touch the floor, and please step backwards to downward facing dog pose. And take a deep breath in your downward dog pose. And then lightly step forward with your left foot. Touch your right knee down to the floor. So that's the base of the pose called Anjane Asana. 
Let the head bow gently. So Pitta benefits from the quality of humility. When you next inhale, straighten your right leg, make it longer, stronger. Very good. And then exhale and lightly touch your right knee down. Good. Inhale to straighten, strengthen and lengthen. And exhale to gently touch down, noticing the quality of your exhale would not blow out a candle that would be the beneath the tip of your nose. And we'll do it twice more. You may be noticing that whether the leg is going towards the straight position or your knee is coming to the floor, that you're highlighting your hip flexors on the right side. We'll do it one more time. And when your right knee touches lightly down, then you're gonna keep it down. And let's inhale, rise up to Anjane Asana. Hook your thumbs if you can, change the hook of which thumb is behind. Reach up through the inner body, but keep your gaze restful and tranquil. And try to sense the way you're stewarding the fire at the solar plexus. This again is the fire of digestion, which means for food, but also digesting thoughts and emotions. When you next exhale, sweep your arms wide, come over your left leg as you lightly touch the floor. Please step forward to Uttanasana. And enjoy a deep bow towards your legs. Reach back and interlace your fingers at the small of your back. Roll your shoulders open. There you go. So the fire of Pitta is for digestion, as I said, but it's also the fire of having a sense of our personal contribution, our personal purpose, but imbued with a sense of humility. As you next inhale, bend your knees, come back down to the sort of chair pose, hybrid position, and then exhale, press down through your heels, rise up to standing. And inhale, begin the process of a standing back bend. And then inhale, bring yourself upright and stand quietly in mountain pose. In mountain pose, you can listen for the echo moving through your body right now. And try to sense all the multitudes of small and large actions that are happening on your behalf right now. The way the cells, the muscles, the breath, everything is collaborating in a deeply intelligent system. And what you can do is let's get one block if that's all you have, but two if you have two. And we're going to be taking a look at the pose called triangle pose and then a pose that's like a hybrid between triangle, warrior two, and football, which I know sounds funny. Okay, so I'll demonstrate. You can watch here. I'll take a wide stance. I'm going to go so it looks like it's your right side. For the purpose of demonstrating, let me tie my hair back here. So we'll take the stance that you would think of as your trikonasana stance. And for some of you, that's shorter or longer than what mine looks like right now. And I'm going to recommend that we put the blocks on the tall setting because I want to bring awareness into the back hemisphere of the body around through here. And the tall setting will make that a little bit easier for us to feel the back of the body in the pose. So please watch for the first row. When I come down to the two blocks, my aim is that I can press down and set up my triangle pose to feel a little bit like cat pose for the torso. 
So one of the things that happens here, if I do cat pose well enough with the torso, there's a sense that from the back of my right hip, I can really press down, left hip for you guys, I can press down into my left heel. And I want us to keep that sense so that as we rotate the back hip, the back heel becomes more grounded and we're rolling through an exploration that becomes a kind of a half moon shape here for trikonasana. So our triangle pose will not be the hard angles of algebra or geometry. It's going to be the round angles of nature. Okay, so let's have you step your right foot forward now and your left foot back. If possible, place your blocks on the tall setting. Energize both legs and press into a cat pose spine. Take your gaze inward. Remember that Pitta does benefit from the qualities of humility and inwardness. Even though Pitta also has great leadership qualities, it longs to serve and to contribute, Pitta needs to be restored by this inwardness and humility. Now press down firmly into your right arm and begin the process of rolling your left hip back. Rotate your belly to the left. Strengthen your right leg. And then begin to just slowly rotate your rib cage open to your left. Take your time and let the left arm join your pose without urgency. You can almost think of the left arm like the wisteria in my backyard. They're not trying to be gladiolus. The wisteria has a little draping quality, whereas the gladiolus goes straight up. We won't see them yet this time of year, but try to sense more like the wisteria. The left arm is not trying to become something more than that. Press firmly into your right arm and your left heel and let the breath nourish the left hemisphere of your body. And notice how it is to have a, a curvy triangle pose like the angles of nature. And when you next exhale, start lowering your left fingertips, thank you Susie, back down to the block. As you touch the block, then rotate your pelvis once more to face towards the two blocks. And please step your left foot forward and your right foot back to change sides. Perfect. You're gonna face towards your hands and blocks at first. Thank you, Laura. And press down into both blocks to make the cat pose spine. This means you're also gonna stretch the myofascial region and the lumbar spine which is really tight for lots of people right now. now. As you're pressing firmly into your left arm, you wanna make that a firm, stable space. Start to root your tailbone a bit more and begin to rotate your hips to your right. As you're rotating, then rotate your deep low belly to the right. Rotate your rib cage and your heart and allow your right arm to find out where it most wants to be. You can raise it slightly, you can raise it less. You're giving the permission to your right arm. You have to participate because gravity would just have your right arm dangle like an elephant trunk. I'm recommending you have a sense like it's part of the wisteria family. Most of us know if we have any wisteria outside our windows that it's a pretty robust plant. It does not mind winding itself around anything nearby. So let your arm be like the wisteria blossoms and the, the strength of the plant is in your legs and your left arm. Nice work, everyone. As you exhale, begin the process now of rolling back down to lightly touch both blocks, find your cat pose spine. And then please float your right foot forward to meet your left foot and rise up to standing. Okay. And now I'm gonna show you another 
sort of hybrid pose. I'd like you to watch for a few moments. Good. Thank you for your efforts on that one. So this is what I call the um, football yoga pose combo. And it's because the name came a long time ago. We haven't updated it. So I'm going to put warrior two into place here for the legs, just for the leg part. And then we take this kind of humble warrior pose. So keeping the front leg stable, we let the torso bow. And then you choose a block and the height of the block for your hand. And the other hand sets against the inside of the knee. So this, I imagine now that the football scrimmage is ahead of me and that I'm on that yard line. I haven't played football, but I've seen it. And this hand pressing against the right knee is to help open the inner right thigh. Okay, so let's start together from warrior two with the right foot as the front foot. I'm seeing the wisteria in my backyard blowing in the breeze. <laughs> I'm gonna see you like that in a moment too. So with your right thigh, it does not need to be parallel to the floor, but I do want your knee to be vertical to your heel. So that line is firmly established. Take your hands to the small of your back. Now try keeping your right knee pointing straight with the toes of your right foot as you bow your head. And then you bow the spine. You let the torso come. You start recognizing there is a balance pose going on here. And drape the left hand down to find the block at the height that you need for your capacity and stamina. Place your right hand on your right knee and encourage the right knee to open. And keeping your head gently bowed so there's an inwardness to your efforts. Notice the quality of the breath, especially how the exhale through the nose would not cause the candle to flicker wildly. Try to sense the inhale coming into the back hemisphere of your body and also along the right side of your waist. And then as you exhale, see if you can float your left hand off the block to the small of your back and start rolling yourself up to your warrior two legs. And then straighten your front leg, make it parallel. We'll go to the other side. Okay, very good work. You should feel warm, right? The heat in the lower body, for sure, especially running down your right leg. Let's bend the left knee. Make the shin vertical like this, yeah. Rest your hands at the small of your back. And then gently bowing your head. Begin the process of rolling down. At some point you notice, oh goodness, it's actually a balance pose. Think of your cat pose spine. So you're not just shooting the hips backwards to bow forward here. Keep your left knee lined up with the toes of your left foot. And you can drape the right hand down to whatever height of block is gonna feel good for your stamina. And then place your left hand on your left knee. And as you open the left inner thigh and knee, also breathe into the back of your waist and the left side of the waist as well. And sense the quality of the exhale. In this case, this afternoon, the quality of the exhale is contributing to the responsibility of the inhale. Now keeping the left knee lined up with the toes of your left foot, place your right hand on the small of your back and see what you can do for rolling the tailbone down and you kind of roll up through a cat pose spine to rise back up to your warrior two. 
and then straighten your left leg. Make your feet parallel. And let's go heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe to center. And find a place to stand in mountain pose. You may close your eyes. And try to sense again the multitudes of actions that are happening within you. It's really beyond our comprehension how much is occurring in the inner body. All this cellular activity, musculoskeletal activity, innervation, metabolization. Okay, and then please open your eyes and let's take a couple of folded blankets. You can put the blocks aside. I already have my folded blankets because this is like, I like to say this is like a cooking show where you pre-chop the vegetables. So my folded blankets are already here. So this is two folded blankets, long and narrow, like this. One on top of the other, like so. watching you. Yeah, very good. Okay, so now I'm going to take these on the width of my mat so you can see the profile. And I'm going to sit on these blankets so that when I sit here, let me scoot these guys forward, what I have at first is both shins on the floor and only my right hip on the blanket. This is for a specific kind of twist. So both knees are down, both feet are tucked under like this. Yep. And one block close by, we're gonna to twist to the right. There you go. So cross your left hand to your right knee. And when you walk back with the block with your right hand, what you can do is then step the block over the blanket or onto the blanket to help with your twist. Whichever way you decide, whether the block is on the inside, on top of, or behind the blanket, it should feel conducive to your breathing, not to some idea you have of the photo finish of your pose. So when you're rotating, I'm going to ask you to really sense across the lowest part of your belly, the right side of the belly, this kind of maple experience where you're rotating and then the next ribbon rotates and then the next ribbon rotates. And that process is occurring until the organs are also involved in the twist, and then your heart, and then your gaze. And then as you next exhale, please rotate around to face forward. So having your hip and your right thigh on this blanket, we're now going to walk out to the right, stack both knees. So both knees and both your right hip, both thighs, both knees, they should feel like they're a unit now. Okay, pick up the feet, right? So this is a little bit of a balance pose. If you pick up the left arm, you're balancing right now. I'm gonna ask you to take the left leg the top leg and stretch it straight out and let the heel come down towards the floor and reach your left arm overhead towards your right. So my hope is that you're starting to sense something through the left low belly here, maybe the left outer hip through here, perhaps for some of you on the left lower back. Let the breath be long and smooth. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Good. And now we're going to stack both knees again, and Susie can return to my camera. We'll place one hand here, sweep the right arm under, stack both knees, and begin to twist over to your left 
Hold your feet up at the same height as your knees. It's because I don't want your legs to be a little bit sloppy where they become a liability for your sacrum. As you're twisting, you may choose to turn your head to your left. If that kind of increases the inner experience of your practice, if it distracts you for any reason, you could close your eyes and keep your gaze inward. And try to sense now on the left low belly, that kind of maypole action, right? So the low belly is a part of the twist. And then the next ribbon of the twist. And then the next ribbon. And eventually you sense the organs and the heart are also involved in the twist. And let's sweep the left arm like a half circle or a rainbow overhead until the left hand then meets your right hand. Press onto the floor, rise up. We're gonna change sides so you can either levitate to cross to the other side or you can step over like a mortal, a mere mortal. And we're gonna have the left hip on the blankets now and the left thigh. That's good. And you may reach for a block. Cross your right hand to your left knee. There we have a block. You can walk the hand back to your block. You could place the block up on the blanket. You can hop over the blanket with your block. But the way you make the choice isn't like, how deeply can I go? How important can I feel in this yoga pose? How accomplished can I be? It's really the question of how much you sense the inner body in the twist. So as you're rotating, put your attention at the left low belly, the first ribbon on the maypole. And try to sense the twist as it comes up through the maypole image, the next ribbon up and the next. Listen to your inner experience there. And then as you exhale, go ahead and unwind and place the blocks out of your way. Lie on your right side, left side, excuse me. I'm not mirroring, I have to remember when I'm mirroring and when I'm not. So stack both legs. And then take the right leg, the top leg, reach it out to the best of your ability. You can encourage your heel to come down the inner heel. Sweep your arm past your ear and breathe into the left, sorry, in the right hemisphere of the body. And listen inside for where the breath makes contact with the inner body. For all the sensations you can sense in your body right now, please consider each of them to be really just sources of information for you from your body, from your body intelligence. Also what your body's holding on behalf of your mind or your psyche or your heart. And then slowly release the right hand to come towards your left shoulder for support. Back both knees, pick up the left arm, bring it under. Okay, and so with both legs stacked on your blanket, begin to twist over to your right. In the process of twisting, try to keep your knees together so that this unit of the lower body is stable. Do you think you're able to keep your feet together? I trust you. 
and they can hover a little bit from the floor so you're not trying to get the ankles down to the ground. Another breath in and make a half circle shape with your right arm to come over towards your left and then you can use one or both hands to press yourself back up to sitting. Nice work there and we're going to come down for Shavasana using the two blankets. So I would recommend that you take these blankets this way down your mat and when you lie down you could place the hips in front of the blankets, not directly on them. And then lie backwards and take the top blanket and make a little curl right under your neck like this. And if you'd like to, you could take each of the blocks and set up for the pose called Vadakanasana, like this. If you don't have two blocks, of course, that's understandable. Yoga will not be penalizing you for that, but you could also just choose to take the legs straight out like this. I'm really interested in your head being a little bit higher than your heart, your heart being a little bit higher than your solar plexus, and that the, the energy of digestion travels downwards in the physical body. So does the energy of humility and restoration. So that's our aim in setting up this kind of Shavasana position. And float the arms out to the side and palms can be face up if you like. As you rest, consider that since Pitta governs the eyes, working with the eyes in Shavasana is a good way to support your inner process. So allow your eyes to turn inward and to become the most loving version of your eyes. So that you're gazing downward towards your own innocence and earnestness. Allow your eyes to become the most loving version of your eyes. Gazing downward and inward to see your own innocence and earnestness. Your innate good heartedness. Yoga likes to tell us that this innate good heartedness, this basic innocence, the earnestness of the human spirit. It was factory installed. It came with your package. Of course, mental habit obscures our understanding of ourselves and others. So let the eyes be the most loving version of your eyes. And welcome your tongue to become heavy at the bottom of your mouth. So the lower jaw may release from the upper jaw. Even allow the back of the throat to become hollow and kind. As you gaze down towards the, your inner life, welcome your heart to soften, to melt any unnecessary tension or apprehension.
And coming down to the solar plexus, just welcome yourself to come back home to this inner sense of humility. You are being cared for by a larger intelligence right now as you rest. Oh without stirring your mind or your senses. Just invite a slightly deeper breath in. And gently wiggle your fingers and your toes. When you wiggle the toes and fingers, then you can bend one knee at a time. If you're in Baddha Konasana, fold the knees up to center. And then please roll to your side, your onto blanket, so you'll go downhill slightly. And you can use both hands to come back up to sitting. Imagine the fire in the stomach, just enough fire to digest the food. Our fire does not need to be a 
a brush fire, a blazing fire. Should not be a smoldering fire, but we just need the fire for digesting the food, not for breathing like a dragon onto other people. Notice also the qualities of your mind and your heart in these moments. Pitta is instinctively a leadership dosha. It has the quality of leadership, also needs the quality of humility. It is a quality, Pitta dosha, of passion and purpose also needs to remember that we are not essentially the doer, that life is happening through us. Please bring your hands together at your heart. You can sing with me the Om Shanti. Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much, everyone. Namaste. Very nice to be with you. I will come up to the camera so we can visit a little bit too.